स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Welcome students in today's video what we are going to do is talk about something called the do hammers principle so essentially what you have is uh, do hammer principle so what's the idea behind the do hammers principle let us assume that we want to uh, talk about a equation which looks like this uh let's say so for now what we are going to do is i am going to talk about do hammers principle in the ode case yes see if we understand what is going on in the ode case yes exactly the same sort of idea works in pd uh, we just have to uh, replace you know what we are going to do here in do hammers principle rn we just have to replace rn with you no know, function space so we'll talk about it later but first let us understand what do hammer principle says in the ode case so let us uh, assume that we have let a be a n cross n okay uh, matrix matrix and f is in rn clear okay with h of mm, t yes in rn be given clear be given then the ode then the ode let us assume that u prime of t equals to a u of t plus h of t with this initial condition u0 equals to f clear has a unique solution has a unique solution which is given by given by u of t equals to e power ta times f plus 0 to t e power t minus tau times a h of tau d tau okay so essentially what this means is this see if you look at it carefully so let us i mean forget about you know i i just wrote a very you know uh, do hammer principle for a system of equation so essentially this is for a system of equation okay so this is for a uh, system of ode clear of course i mean you can take a to be a one cross one uh, matrix so essentially uh, a equals to 1 that you of course can take and in that case that's a simple equation which is a non homogeneous equation linear non homogeneous equation right it's so uh, a small remark remark is uh, essentially uh, if if a is a one cross one matrix so basically n equals to 1 is a uh, scalar okay a is a scalar then then of course all of this is r equals to r n is r and uh, this all is also r so then uh, this equation becomes something like this u prime of t equals to some uh, constant uh, let's say c of u t plus um, let's say d yeah and this h you can have it as a function of t you can have it as a constant but let's just say it's a function of t and in this case uh, u at the point 0 that is uh, here it is a vector f for rn and here it will be a scalar uh, let's say something uh, e 
so this problem that's a linear equation right it's a linear equation but it's a non inhomogeneous or non homogeneous equation right because that d is there d can be zero d can maybe non zero so if this is there then you have a um, i mean of course you can solve this problem right and uh, can you tell me what is the solution of this problem so essentially how we can look at the solution of this problem that's the question you understand what i'm trying to say so for if a is scalar just uh, this is a generalized version this is a special version if a is scalar i want to look at uh, the structure of the solution of this particular problem right and what uh, duhamel's principle says is this particular problem has a very special structure and what is the structure is the structure is this uh, so u of t yeah any solution u of t that will be the solution solution at time t to the problem u prime t equals to lesser for this problem c of ut clear and u0 is equals to c this problem right so this is what duhamel's principle says so therefore one can say that ut will look like this see this c ut forget about d of t if you just for throw out the d of t let's say that's your zero so essentially the equation turns out to be u prime t equals to c ut and u0 equals to c e that's the e so uh, see what duhamel's principle says is any solution of this in homogeneous equation is first of all the solution of the homogeneous equation with this initial condition u0 equals to e plus this is important yeah plus the integral from 0 to t okay solution so essentially this is a function yeah so it will be the solution at time t minus tau clear to uh, this problem u prime of t equals to a of u t okay and this is important yeah u tau so in this case it is d so this is d of tau okay tau clear d tau so essentially uh, let's just uh, understand what it is saying it is saying that you do not have to solve the inhomogeneous problem but you can break the problem into two parts one is a homogeneous problem with the initial condition of uh, i mean same initial condition as the uh, original inhomogeneous problem right plus you can i mean the plus the integral between 0 and t this is 0 this is the initial point 0 it can be x naught also okay i don't care i mean if you want you can put an x naught here so that will be x naught to some x or t naught whatever you want to call it yeah let's say t naught so it's just t naught to some t in that case t naught to t you have to indicate it with the solution at a time t so essentially now another initial so look at another initial condition okay i should write it as c times u of t okay uh, so uh, the solution of this problem okay at u prime t equals to c u t so essentially again the another homogeneous problem you see d is zero here another homogeneous problem but the initial condition here is u of tau is d tau so we are not taking you know that here t is starting from zero here i am not starting from zero here i am starting from any arbitrary tau which is between zero and small t okay and i am looking at the problem with this initial condition clear but u is start this i mean u is coming from this source term this inhomogeneous part d of tau okay and that is what it is saying that if you take this thing plus you integrate the solution of this problem between 0 and tau then you are going to get the solution of e prime of t so this is basically what uh, you know duhamel's principle says in scalar part i mean this is just a generalization of this thing okay so let us understand how all of this is true and then uh, we'll move forward with the od version of it okay so let's look at the next part so essentially let us look at uh, the proof of this thing okay the proof first thing first you see uh, of course uh, you have this equation right you do not have to worry about this thing that uh, u prime of t u prime of t see let's just write down what we need to prove we need to prove this thing right that u of t has to look like the solution solution of u prime of u prime equals to let's just do the scalar case yeah? 
and uh, I mean it's just it's exactly the same thing yeah whatever we are going to do here but uh, I will stick with the scalar case here C of u and u at the point 0 is e let's say that's the equation the first equation that uh, I said that u of t will be uh, this one plus what is it 0 to t uh, this is the uh, solution of u prime equals to c u and u0 equals to uh, this is I took h right u tau equals to h tau u tau equals to h tau t tau so uh, we want to look at the uh, this problem yeah we want to look at this problem and then we are done right so how do you get it see essentially um, it is not very difficult to see that this thing works right because u prime plus c u equals to equals to d right and u0 equals to e this this is minus c this was the equation let's write down the uh, let's try to solve this problem first and then we'll go from here so if i want to solve this problem first what do you do we just multiply it by e power minus ct right so that will be u of t e power minus c times t the derivative of this thing is equals to d of t e power minus c t okay so that is there and that will give me a u of t e power minus c t uh, this uh, you can integrate it right so that uh, integration will give me uh, 0 to t d of tau e power minus c tau d tau clear and that will be u and of course here there is a boundary term right uh, minus sorry so this will be evaluated between 0 and t right 0 and t so and this again okay so if this is evaluated between 0 and t it will be e power u t e power minus c t minus u of 0 u of 0 is e e power minus c t this e and that e is different no here this is exponential so let's say um, this is exponential huh? this is exponential exponential okay exponential minus ct um, so it equals to 0 to t uh, d tau exponential minus c tau d tau okay i will write it like this i'm sorry about it so this e is just an arbitrary e i mean you can take some other things also okay so u of t how does it look like it will look like um, e okay plus uh, t equals to 0 so this term is not there okay right see for t equals to t it is this and t equals to 0 essentially exponential of minus 0 which is 1 so u of 0 u of 0 is given to be e so this is why minus e so now this is e uh, exponential c t plus 0 to t um, d tau I can take this thing inside right so this is exponential because the integral is on tau it is minus c tau plus c t d tau right so which is e exponential c t plus 0 to t d tau exponential minus c t minus tau tau minus t right d tau so essentially you see we did the exact same thing here whatever we wrote here what e e power c t u t so this is u t right this is u t and this is a this is the solution of this problem right this is the solution of this hom inhomogeneous equation this is the inhomogeneous equation so you see the any solution of inhomogeneous equation looks like this so what is this part this part actually uh, you can see that if you are taking phi of t to be exponent e times exponential c t okay then phi prime of t equals to you can show that this is c yeah this is c phi of t and what is phi of 0 p of 0 is exp uh, exponential so basically this e exponential ct solve the homogeneous problem solve the homogeneous problem and plus 0 to tau you see what is d tau exponential minus c tau minus so exponential c 
t minus tau okay that is the solution of this problem see so another let's say what is the solution of u prime equals to c u and u tau equals to h tau okay? what is the solution of this thing so you can easily check that let's say uh, psi of uh, tau yeah uh, sorry psi of t what is the solution of this problem so it is essentially why did i to uh, okay i wrote it like h right this is this is not h in our case it is uh, what is the homogeneous prop dot here d right so it is d of tau right okay so uh, you see what happens here what is psi of t it is d of tau exponential c t minus tau right that that's the solution you can easily check that that's uh, is, that is what going to happen okay this is not d this is h yeah for us d is h so this is not d so for us d is h yeah so this is d of tau yeah d of tau okay so uh, see uh, so you understand that uh, this is psi of uh, psi of t and when you integrate it uh, so th this is just a solution corresponding to tau yeah when you taking when you are taking your initial condition to be tau this is what the solution will look like right and this solution what you have to do is this is the function of t this you have to integrate between 0 and t so that's what it is written here okay you integrate between 0 and t this thing and that will give you u of t so basically you see what happens is this duhamel's principle says that if you want to solve an inhomogeneous equation with a, I mean initial condition like this then you have to solve uh, not a homogeneous inhomogeneous equation but a homogeneous equation the first thing you solve the homogeneous equation with the initial condition the exact initial condition plus you integrate it uh, what do you integrate you integrate a function which is the solution of the homogeneous problem but uh, the initial condition is at the uh, I mean that comes from the in the source term the D the inhomogeneous part that is d tau at the level tau and then you integrate tau between 0 and t that will give you u of t so this is duhamel's principle clear what uh, this does is actually it says that you do not always have to uh, you know solve a inhomogeneous problem but you solve a series of uh, homogeneous problems and that will give you a solution of an inhomogeneous problem yeah so we are going to use the exact same kind of idea but for a pd okay uh, so we are going to solve heat equation and wave equation with the help of this two hammers principle okay so now what is our goal actually is to talk about this problem we want to solve this problem ut minus laplacian of u this is our end goal here f in rn cross zero infinity i am doing it for r and you do understand that this holds for r cross 0 infinity also so one dimensional two dimensional n dimensional right so this is the uh, generalized version u is equals to 0 so that is on r n cross uh, t equals to 0 right so essentially this that's the base of the problem uh, you have uh, what are we doing here essentially uh, let's say um, in one dimension in one dimension r n is r so that's your r and that's your t you know um, this is the t variable that's your r variable that this is your domain okay that's the domain which we have and in this domain the co this question po uh, boils down to this so you have a u uh, which has to be satisfied so which satisfies ut minus laplacian u is equals to f this f is given to us right and that is in this part of the domain and u is zero so on this line yeah uh, rn cross t equals to, so basically r cross t equals to zero let's say on this line u is given to be zero yes then the question is how do i uh, find a solution of this thing i want to find an explicit kind of formula for this problem yeah and how do i find it so this is for a inhomogeneous heat equation this is called a inhomogeneous homogeneous right inhomogeneous heat equation heat equation as you can see that uh, i mean uh, in homogeneous heat equation if you want to find an explicit solution what we are going to do is we are going to use duhamel's principle to do this yes to uh, find a solution for the inhomogeneous heat equation so essentially what we have to do duhamel's principle says something about you know uh, finding uh, solutions for homogeneous problems right and then you know do some sort of integration kind of thing yeah we'll look at it uh, from that point so essentially what we have to do is first of all we have to know that how to uh, find a solution so from the motivation of duhamel's principle from uh, duhamel's principle 
Duhamel's principle uh, for OD, for OD. So we just did the OD part, right? So from Duhamel's principle of OD, we know that um, if if one can find one can find a formula formula. Um, let's say uh, to uh, to solve the homogeneous problem, right? The homogeneous problem, of course, with a different. Uh, I mean, this this boundary condition, right? Okay, homogeneous problem, homogeneous problem. Then, I mean, some you know integration kind of thing we, uh, may actually give me the uh, required solution of this problem. So let's say that's your one. Okay. So uh, then uh, some, I mean, you know, integration kind of thing. Yeah, this is not very mathematically you do realize, but uh, integration type, um, you know, operation may provide us, may provide a solution of one, right? And we want to uh, do something like this. For a PD, see, do have a principle, we did it for OD, we want to repeat the same sort of idea in PD. Now, let's look at how we can do such a thing. Yeah, so you understand that solving this problem boils down to solving the homogeneous problem first. Right, so um, what we are going to do is, first of all, we are going to talk about the homogeneous problem. So, homogeneous, homogeneous heat equation homogeneous heat equation okay so how do we talk about homogeneous heat equation see essentially what is the problem so let's write out the initial value problem so this is called the initial value or the cauchy problem okay initial value homogeneous problem and the problem will look like this ut minus laplacian of u equals to let us say this is zero in rn cross zero infinity right see uh, here f is zero that's your homogeneous part and of course u is uh, let's say that's your g some g huh? uh, on rn cross 0 infinity right so here i'm taking uh, 0 let's just take it to be some g huh? some some number so g is equal to 0 that will give you equal to 0 correct right so uh, that's your homogeneous problem and first of all we want to solve this homogeneous problem and if you remember for laplace case a homogeneous problem was solved using uh, you know the fundamental solution eh? uh, so if you recall just recall recall what is the fundamental solution the fundamental solution mental solution for the heat operator uh, operator is given by is given by capital phi if you remember yes and these at the at po any point xt will be 1 by 4 pi t whole power n by 2 yes uh, e power so that's your exponential mod x square by 4t yes this is uh, t positive x r n in r n right x in r n and this is zero otherwise clear so that's your fundamental solution now we want to exploit this fundamental solution to get a solution of this homogeneous uh, heat equation okay so let's look at uh, how we get that so essentially you see x t going to phi of x t the fundamental solution right of the heat equation yes so x t going to phi of x t this solves solves the heat equation right the heat equation clear okay of course uh, away from 0 0 except at the point 0 0 this solves the heat equation so if that does then therefore x t okay going to phi of x minus y t this also solves the heat equation solves the heat equation okay where uh, for every for each fixed y in rn 
clear see essentially what are we doing here we are just replacing x by so we are just translating x to the origin from uh, 0 to y right so for every fixed y uh, if you just replace uh, x by x minus y okay then that will also solve the heat equation i mean this is very easy to see please do that part huh? it's not a issue yes okay now because you know that laplacian is invariant on a translation the exactly the same idea works here okay so therefore you can actually think of this right that uh, if you take u of x t to be integral over r n okay uh, phi of x minus y times t uh, g of y dy okay let's say you are taking this to be u of x t so that is basically 1 by 4 pi t whole power n by 2 okay integral over r n uh, e power minus x minus y whole square by 40 g of y dy okay this one should also be a solution also be a solution see i am not doing any mathematics right now okay uh, this is just a motivation huh? this is just a motivation so clear see what uh, let me recall again what i am trying to say here First thing first, xt going to phi of xt definitely this of the heat equation because that's the fundamental solution in Rn. Uh, so essentially for every point except at the point origin, right? Therefore, what happens is since uh, you know the heat equation contains the Laplacian part, yes, that part will actually guarantee that if you translate this x to x minus y for every fixed y in Rn, phi of x minus y times t, that will also solve the heat equation. Yeah. Once it does, then what you do is you are just taking an, an so this holds for every y, right? So if we are integrating over R n of phi of x minus y times t g of y, what is this g? G is the initial condition, right? So if x minus y uh, going to phi of x minus y solve the heat equation, so x t going to phi of x minus y t times g of y. So here you see here I can write it like this, no? You see phi of x minus y t times g of y this also should solve the heat equation right this also should solve so this at the so xt going to something like this okay this should solve the heat equation right okay uh, the homogeneous problem the, the homogeneous problem okay this should solve the homogeneous problem for every fixed y and then that is why what we are saying is that then therefore if we integrate it between r n if you integrate this y okay so uh, if you run this y over a whole rn then that u of xt which you are going to get that should also solve the problem right i mean that's the initial idea yeah this is the idea which we want to you know justify so what is the problem here why can't we directly justify this thing so i can just take the ut and u uh, laplacian of u and uh, you know just put it here and just see that whatever is solved yeah we can of course do that but there are issues here why we can't directly do because there is a singularity here right there is a singularity at t equals to 0 and x equals to 0 so essentially there is a singularity at origin and hence we cannot uh, directly you know push the derivative inside to uh, justify this thing so for the, uh, this we have a theorem theorem so what does the theorem say this is basically the solution of initial solution of initial value problem right so the theorem says that you assume assume g which is in c r n okay intersection l infinity r n clear so the continuous intersection l infinity so this is basically a bounded function uh, bind, bounded continuous function in r n right and and define u of x t as this one okay 1 by 4 pi t whole power n by 2 okay integral over r n exponential minus x minus y square by 40 g of y dy yeah if you if you define it like this then then the following holds yes number one this u which you are going to get so this is very important this is called a heat kernel right so this is u is in c infinity of r n cross zero infinity okay so this u is actually uh, you can actually prove that this u 
I mean, we are struggling to uh, prove that uh, right now. It's not evident that we can actually show it. But the thing is, this U is not only differentiable, but it is infinitely differentiable in Rn cross T. You forget about T equals to 0. If you forget about T equals to 0, between 0 and infinity, it is also in the upper part uh, of the upper half plane. Okay. It is infinitely differentiable. Okay. Of course, ut of xt, okay, minus Laplacian x of uxt, yes, that is equals to 0. So, essentially what am I saying? U solves the homogeneous um, heat equation, right? So, this is for x in Rn and t positive. This is what we want. And the third part we want is we want to have the initial conditions to be satisfied, right? So, how do, does it satisfy? So, I have limit x t going to x not 0 okay and uh, x is in R n t positive okay u of x t is g of x not okay x not for each x not in R n so what does it say it says that the limit okay um, I mean, if you take any point uh, on this, uh, you know, upper half plane, and if you take the limit of that point at x naught t, for let's say x naught t is any point on the boundary, if you take the limit um, at that point, then u actually converges to g. So, the, it has satisfied the homogeneous, uh, I mean, you know, the condition in such a way, the initial condition. So, um, let us again uh, revise this thing. This is a very important thing. What it says is this. I want to solve the homogeneous problem. Yeah. Ut minus Laplacian u equals to 0. What I do? I take the this fundamental solution and write the fundamental and, uh, you know, construct a uxt like this. This is just a idea, right? Uh, and now this theorem actually guarantees that this idea works. What it guarantees is if you define u like this, then this u will solve, uh, this is uh, infinitely differentiable. It solves the homogeneous heat equation and uh, on the boundary u is g, clear? So let's just, uh, I mean, try and prove this theorem. Then we'll go from there. Okay, so what is the proof of this theorem? Uh, proof. Proof. Okay, let us look at uh, what we have uh, as the function. So essentially, you see, uh, let us say that this function f f or h, let's say, yeah, h of x t one by t power n by two e power minus x square by four t. Yeah, this is just a fundamental solution, right? I mean, of course, the constant part is not there. But if you just throw out the constant, this is just a fundamental solution. Now, this solution, yeah, uh, this, this is just a function, yeah? This function, do you really think that this is infinity differentiable? Do you think it is infinity differentiable? It is, is C infinity? Do you think it is C infinity? Of course, it is C infinity, yeah? But where? C infinity of R n cross not at t equals to 0. See, if you just throw out t equals to 0, then everywhere this is C infinity, right? There's absolutely no issue here. So, that is equal, let's say, between delta infinity in this set. So, for each delta positive, for each delta positive, this h of t is essentially a C infinity function, right? Yeah, this is a C infinity function. And this I want you guys to check that the derivative, huh? if you take the derivative d alpha of h of x t, any derivative, huh? uh, alpha is the multi index, okay, any derivative you take that is uniformly bounded, so less than equal n, okay, so um, for all multi index mod alpha, okay, for all mod alpha clear so this n is independent of alpha i mean it can be alpha can be infinity also any alpha okay and this is uh, true so essentially it is saying that uh, uniformly bounded derivative formally bounded derivative okay how do you prove it so this you guys have to check it yourself huh? let me tell you how do you prove it 
So first of all, see, you have to show what is the structure of d alpha of h. So for that, what you do is first of all, take the first derivative of this thing. I mean, this is very easy to find a derivative, right? Huh? To find a derivative first and then take d2. Once you write d2, you see what is the structure coming. So essentially, you see, um, I mean, uh, this t will have some power. Okay, from here there is t, t square, t cube, all that sort of thing will come and exponentially of course there, okay. Since this exponential, yeah, at infinity, as t goes to infinity, this decreases, okay. What you have is, uh, I mean, for all multi-index alpha, this is actually bounded, okay. This is actually bounded and t is of course between delta and infinity, yeah. So this holds um, for all xt in Rn cross and delta infinity clear okay so uh, of course uh, i mean uh, if x is in rn this exponential is uh, decaying right so essentially um, i mean you write and uh, find out what d alpha of h of xt how do you find it use induction okay so uh, check using induction using induction okay that this is true yeah once you do this then uh, you can actually say that it is uniformly it has uniformly bounded derivatives okay so once you have this therefore what is u of xt u of xt is essentially if you see what is u of xt it is 1 by 4 pi t whole power n by 2 right okay you have to you know learn this thing this is very very important this is the heat kernel okay u of xt this is written like minus x minus y whole square by uh, 4t okay that's your thing and uh, due to this condition initial condition i have gy dy okay that is your u of xt now you see if uh, this particular thing is c infinity and you are integrating essentially this thing right you are integrating this thing yeah what do you think this happens i mean if you integrate uh, in c infinity function from fundamental theorem of calculus what is going to happen this u of xt is c infinity this is not very difficult to see where it is c infinity rn cross delta infinity right delta infinity for every delta positive okay that is that is uh, u is in c infinity of rn cross 0 infinity right this holds for any delta positive so basically it holds for rn cross 0 infinity right again let me again recall h is c infinity yeah please try and find it yeah it is c infinity it's not very difficult i mean it's very easy to see yeah this is c infinity so h is c infinity if h is c infinity then you are writing u of xt to be an integral of this sort of function a c infinity function fundamental theorem and g is of course given to be continuous and bounded right g is given to be continuous and bounded if you remember then if you are integrating the whole thing down definitely there is going to be c infinity right okay and this holds for any delta and hence it holds for zero infinity yeah. okay so that is there now also also let's see that if i'm writing ut at the at any point xt minus delta x okay of u of xt if i write it what is it it is essentially integral over rn okay phi t there's a phi component here right phi t minus laplacian of phi clear of x minus y times t g of t g of y dy yes or no yeah i mean you if you take the derivative here phi of t okay and minus uh, delta x of ut so you have this u right you take ut minus phi x of uh, sorry delta x of u of xt i can just write it like this it is integral over rn i take everything inside so this is phi of t minus laplacian of u of course with respect to x of x minus y t g of y dy right i'm just writing this thing in a um, fundamental theorem way okay now if that happens since phi is a fundamental solution this is going to be zero yeah there's nothing to prove here so for x in rn and t positive is this clear why i can see essentially why i can do this thing this is your fundamental sol solution right this is u of x is integral over rn 
this is your fundamental solution at x minus y times t g of y dy right okay if that is the case i am just calculating what u a t and delta x of u is yeah this i can do the i can just take the derivative inside okay and since phi is a fundamental solution phi t minus laplacian of phi is zero yes and that is why this particular thing will solve the homogeneous problem that's what i'm trying to say okay so what is u u is let see u is integral over rn x minus y times t g of y dy right this is u so ut minus delta x u if you are doing see this integral is on y right so i if i take the t derivative with respect to t i can just take that derivative inside so that is why phi t is coming inside right minus you see delta this depends on x right it does not depend on y so i can take the derivative inside the double derivative laplacian laplacian of x i can take inside and that will be minus laplacian of phi that will also work why because this integral is with respect to y yeah this has nothing to do with x so i can take the delta x inside the integral and then that is why it is phi t minus laplacian of phi which is right now let us look at the next part what is the next part the next part is i have to show that uh, the boundary condition is satisfied right so uh, the next part is i have to show this thing right limit xt going going to x not zero yeah uh, u of xt that is equals to g at the point x not okay for x not in rn so if you take any x not in rn t equals to zero of course okay uh, i mean if you take xt which lies i mean approaches x not zero then uh, that should be g of x not this is what we need to prove so this is uh, rtp required to prove okay so for that you fix a x naught so let's say we fix a x naught in rn yes x naught in rn and epsilon positive clear okay and uh, so essentially g is a continuous function so g of um, y minus g of x naught okay this is less than epsilon uh, for mod y i'm not writing all that given epsilon there is delta and everything you guys already know this right so that is less than delta uh, and um, y is in rn of course that is true yeah why because uh, since g is c rn if you remember it is a bounded continuous function right so i am using continuity here so hence hence uh, if mod x minus x naught let's say that is less than uh, let's say delta by 2 what do you have then i have to show this limit right u of xt minus g at the point x naught okay i want to show this this is arbitrarily small as xt goes to x naught zero so this can be written like this now integral over rn what is u of x let's write it phi of x minus y times t okay mod and phi is of course positive so you don't worry about the um, sign of this thing g at the point x naught d of y clear i mean if you want you can put a mod here but that, that that's not an issue so u of x t minus g of x naught looks like this right of course it looks like this yes uh, i'm just putting the values here so that will be less than equals to integral over rn clear uh, phi of x minus y times t mod of g of y minus g at the point x naught of d of y this is very simple why because integral uh, of f is less than equal integral of mod f right that is what i am using here okay now if that is true what am i going to do is see this phi yes the my only issue is this if i want to integrate this thing this phi has a singularity at x naught right as a singularity at x naught so no you do not have to worry about any singularity let's just take a see i know that g of uh, if i am taking y to be you know in this delta neighborhood then y minus x not very small i mean this i can make g very small here right so let us just take it to be you know take a neighborhood of delta first yeah 
you understand what I'm saying? See, I know that G becomes very small in the neighborhood of X naught. Yeah. So let's just break R in as B X naught and uh, delta. Okay. And uh, phi of X minus Y times T. Okay. And uh, G of Y minus G at the point X naught uh, D of Y. Okay. Plus integral over R N. Uh, minus b x naught delta okay uh, phi of x minus y times t um, g of y minus g of x naught d of y clear okay i can write it like this let's say that is your i and that is your j okay now let us again uh, tell you why we are doing this thing see here our information is this uh, phi is a fundamental solution that is it i know that g is essentially small in this neighborhood so i am just taking this neighborhood see neighborhood of uh, center with x naught and ball with the center x naught and radius delta and i am just taking the the other part in this part, G is extremely small. This I don't know. Yeah. So I'm breaking up into this as I and that's as J. So this is your definition. Let's say that's your I. This is your J. Clear? I want to estimate what I is and what J is. So now if mod X minus X naught, this we chose it to be less than delta by 2. Okay. Let's say if I'm choosing my X to be in a you know smaller ball and mod Y minus X naught okay uh, greater than equal delta or greater than delta i don't care then mod y minus x naught this is less than equal mod y minus x plus x minus x naught this we can do yes this i can we can do and hence this is equals to mod y minus x plus delta by 2 i can write it like this yeah this is less than equals to mod y minus x plus half this one y minus x naught clear therefore c mod y minus x is greater than equal half y minus x naught i can write it like this no I just take this thing and the other part and then I can write it like this. Yeah. Okay. Therefore, let's just estimate what J is. Yeah. J equals to, if you remember what is J, let's just write it down. J is integral over Rn minus B0 epsilon. Okay. See, I, you do not have to worry about I because, you know, we know that it is already small because G is very small in that. Yeah. So, first of all, let's look at the J part. It is phi of X minus Y times T mod G of Y minus G of X naught. Okay. D of Y. That's your J. Clear? I want to estimate this thing. So, that is less than equals to, this is less than equals to. 2 times, yeah, I am taking the bound of G, L infinity. So, this is where I want the boundedness of G. See, continuity I want in I, yeah. So, let me write it. Continuity of G, of G is required, required to estimate I. I boundedness of G is required to estimate J. Clear? Here you see G Y minus G of X naught is less than equal mod G of Y plus mod G of X naught, which is less than equal to norm of G L infinity R n. Right? Yeah. So I am sure that this is fine with you. This is Rn minus B X naught delta, okay, phi of X minus Y times T dy, clear, that is true. Now, you see X minus Y is greater than equal half Y minus X naught, right. So, this is less than equal, 
let's write down what phi is right so this is c by t power n by 2 integral over r n minus b x naught delta okay exponential minus x minus y square by 4 t and uh, dy that is there see exponential is a increasing function yeah this is exponential minus something yeah so i can write it like c by t power n by 2 integral over this thing yeah i'm writing this thing all the time x naught delta okay exponential c x minus y for y which is y minus x naught greater than equal delta which is this case y is y minus x naught greater than delta right in this case mod y minus x is greater than half mod y minus x naught okay so i can just replace it here that is what i am trying to do here so that will be minus mod y minus x naught square by 4t dy clear in this set for this these are all those y such that y minus x naught is greater than delta and for such a y and x between x minus x naught less than delta by 2 we have this thing this is what i am using here clear okay now uh, if i have that then what can we say we can uh, write it down as c by t to the power n by 2 okay if you remember that particular thing uh, the earlier part what is it integral of rn in exponential of so let me write this so this is exponential e power minus x minus y naught square by uh, 4t right that's what i wrote there is a 4 extra 4 here yes why there is an extra 4 because you see here uh, i think uh, yeah this is half is there no so square uh, if i am putting this is 1 by 4 y minus x naught so this is mm, not only 4 there is a, another 4 here clear uh, x minus y square is 1 by 4 y minus x naught right so there is an extra 4 here so that 40 40 16 t clear so mm, this is equals to c by t power n by 2 and now i have this is what this is b is x naught delta the complement of this thing rn minus this right so um, this is a radial function okay times 4 so this uh, i if i want to integrate it between delta and infinity uh, e power minus r square by 16 t r to the power n minus 1 dr if you remember this is the integration of radial function of radial function and where is this r power n minus 1 coming of course there is a constant here where is this r power n minus 1 coming this is the volume of the surface area of the unit ball right radial function that is why of radius r that is why this r power n minus 1 is coming here and this r varies between delta and infinity because this is one b x naught delta complement r n minus this okay so this now if i am asking you to check that this goes to zero as t goes to 0 plus i mean can you check this okay what is happening here is this see essentially if you can show that this particular thing is bounded in this interval of course it is because you know uh, that that negative sign makes all the difference here okay once that negative sign is there this exponential decays very fast near infinity what happens is that bounds the whole thing down uh, uh, sorry that bounds the whole thing down but i mean the growth of this thing is greater than the growth of t power n by 2 do you understand so basically uh, the growth of the growth of of this thing delta to infinity e power minus r square by 16 t r power n minus 1 dr okay this thing at infinity of course this function at infinity that grows much faster as a function of t is faster than t power n by 2 clear okay and that is why as t goes to 0 plus what happens is i mean it goes to 0 okay so the growth is greater than n by 2 you just have to this integral you just have to calculate and show that the growth is greater than n by 2 so we check this part okay please check this part that the growth is greater than t power n by 2 and we are done here clear okay once we are done here therefore if mod x minus x naught less than delta by 2 and 
t greater than 0 small enough small enough then u of x t minus g of x naught this is less than 2 epsilon right see here let's just uh, understand this thing this i that does not have any issue here yeah because i mean this is very small you can just make this the whole thing very small okay that's not a problem the main problem is this yes this is less than epsilon and just you are just left out with integral b x naught delta of this thing yeah so which is always bounded by one right so uh, and this is always less than epsilon let's say yeah I, I just have to worry about this thing to do this i found out this particular inequality using this inequality i can show that particular j that goes to zero as t goes to zero so this thing please 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 this is my request to you please j check this part okay see here as a function of t this is exponential minus one by t kind of thing right this this particular function hmm? and as t goes to 0 what is happening here as t goes to 0 it is 1 by exponential infinity so basically this goes to 0 this also goes to 0 yeah what you have to do is just use a l'hopital see i mean you do not have to worry about the x component that is bounded yeah all you have to because at infinity that is bounded r is bounded you just have to worry about the t part this t exponential 1 by t let's say yes yeah, so of course some constant times exponential 1 by t as t tends to 0 the growth of this thing is greater than t by n by 2 how do you check that use l'hopital yeah use l'hopital okay to check that so basically you need to check that limit a so limit t tends to 0 exponential or minus 1 by constant times t minus 1 by c t kind of thing times by t power n by 2 that must go to 0 yes i mean that is very easy to it's not very difficult to see that huh? because the exponential growth is much much faster okay uh, than this power growth okay and hence this goes to 0 and you can show that u of x t minus g of x naught t greater than 0 small enough because t has to go to a 0 right so uh, if you have then u of x t minus g of x naught is less than equal to epsilon and you are done okay right now let us make a small remark here this is very important remark what is the remark the remark is this if g is bounded and continuous so which is given to us bounded and continuous such that g is greater than equal zero of course g is not everywhere zero okay greater than equal zero then u of x t what is it it is essentially 1 by 4 pi t whole power n by 2 integral over r n e power minus x minus y square by 4 t okay g of y dy this particular thing that's always a positive function that's a positive function if this is positive then u of x t uh, is therefore u of x t is positive for all x in r n right uh, and t greater than 0 clear okay how does this physically interpret so the physical interpretation is something like this so we interpret this by saying saying the heat equation okay the heat equation forces forces infinite propagation speed so heat equation uh, has a infinite speed of propagation uh, for disturbances turbulences okay what does that mean that is that is it means that if the initial temperature if the 
initial temperature right so you see you actually can denote the temperature of a system right if that temperature is non negative if the initial temperature is non negative right such that it is positive somewhere right positive somewhere so it can be zero but somewhere it is positive since this is a continuous function if it is positive one point it's positive in a neighborhood right so if it is positive then then the temperature at a later time temperature at any later time time is positive so it's a very powerful statement right see what it is saying is this um, if g is positive at one point also then you can show that u of xt has to see if g is positive at one point what is happening g is a continuous function right if it is positive at one point and zero everywhere let's say that cannot happen because this is a continuous function it has to be positive in the neighborhood yeah so basically let's say at least in a neighborhood of some point it is positive it is positive in some neighborhood and after that it is zero everywhere now if you integrate this thing this particular integral uh, this is always going to be positive because um, at least uh, in that uh, neighborhood where g is positive in that neighborhood the u is going to be positive everywhere that may be zero but in that neighborhood the u is going to be positive so basically u is always positive right so that is interpreted in the this way that if the initial temperature is non negative so basically everywhere it is zero except a small neighborhood where it is positive if that is the case then the temperature at any later time you see u of x t denotes the temperature at a point x and time t so that is always going to be positive see it's positive that's what it is saying yeah so please remember that heat equation this is called the speed of propagation how does the disturbances spread over time disturbances means initially there is a disturbance we want to see how the disturbance distributes itself right and that is actually that if it is non negative if it is non negative then the temperature is positive everywhere right so basically infinite speed of propagation this is what we call it as the infinite speed of propagation right it, what does that mean it means that it does not die out is is that fine it does not die out so once it is positive at one point initially at it will remain positive everywhere for all later time clear so it does not die so that's what infinite speed of propagation does okay so with this we are going to end this lecture